You cannot buy a business without the mindset Gerardo talks about in this podcast episode. Hi, I'm Jared Krause, host of the Buying Online Businesses podcast, and today I'm talking with Gerardo, who is a buying online business graduate who had the goal to sell his restaurant business and buy a content website so we could have less stress and more income, which he's now achieved. He has an incredibly strong story from leaving Mexico as a teen to building his way up to big investments and a better lifestyle, and why he's going from flipping houses to flipping content websites. In this podcast episode, which is super inspiring, Gerard and I talk about his background of work, why he decided to buy an online business out of all the other things he could have chosen to do and has done. We also talk about ad backs and multiples and why we could stop the brokers strong arming us to higher multiples and paying more for ad backs and including a big portion of ad backs in the purchase of a site. We also talk about how much he bought the website he bought for, the multiple monthly income and how he financed it. We also have a caveat here on not doing exactly what he's done unless you have the risk tolerance that Gerardo has. We also talk about the difference between flipping houses, which Gerardo's done a lot of. He's also a real estate agent, an engineer. Why he's moving to flipping content sites instead of flipping houses. We also talk about how long it took him to buy the business, but also how hard it was to do and how long it took him to do his first due diligence. There's so much things that we mention in mindset around his attitude and how what he took from Karate Kid that he used towards buying a business. We talk a lot about mindset challenges that he has put himself through that you can put yourself through, which is important to train your mindset. And there's so many examples there as well. Now, this is such a valuable podcast episode. It's one of my favorite podcast episodes because Gerardo is a high achiever. He has so much to share. He has so much good energy and so many little idiosyncrasies that are super beneficial for you to be learning as an investor in buying your first online business. So you're absolutely gonna love this episode. Before we get stuck in, we talk about due diligence a lot in this podcast episode. And I find it super important for you to have help with your due diligence. So get my framework. It's what I've used, it's what all of our clients have used to go away and save millions of dollars and make millions of dollars through buying online businesses. And you can get that due diligence framework for free at buyingonlinebusinesses.com forward slash free resources. Now let's dive in and chat to Gerardo. Do you have a website you might want to sell either now or in the future? We have a hungry list of cashed up and trained up buyers that want to buy your content website. If you have a site making over $300 per month and want to sell it, head to buyingonlinebusinesses.co forward slash sell your business or email us at info at buyingonlinebusinesses.com because we will likely have a buyer. Details are in the description. Gerardo, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Yuri. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. I'm excited for this chat. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> yeah no sorry it took me a while no no we're really here no we are we are here it's just um it's good that we get the chance to chat about this and share your experience because you've done a lot of work like you out of it, a lot of people that go through the course and do a lot of work you you went hard at it and you're a hard worker and i really appreciate that so i wanted to pick your brain as, as to like why you're a hard worker what some of the challenges you came up against uh, advice you'd give to first timers and stuff but before we dive into all of that juicy stuff why did you want to buy an online business like where did you what were you doing for work previously uh now and what are you looking to gravitate work towards perfect no definitely and before i start i just wanted to Gonna make a, a paid commercial. Jared, pay me. No, I'm just kidding. I just want to say, like, <laughs> why did I want to tell you thanks, man? That's why I'm here because uh, uh, I know you, I went to the course. And honestly, I'll be I'll be one of those people that's skeptics when you see interviews and feedback. I'm like, ah, oh, man, it might be a friend of his, or you know, <laughs> like it's like honestly, that's me. That's how I'm. I'm very skeptic, you know. When I say, but it's like I want to I want to give some of the feedback back because like I mean, I truly appreciate the, the work that you put in it. Like you you're truly. Uh, interested in, in in helping people out, uh, and and I gotta say it's not easy. You know, it's simple. It's simple. Uh, easy means no effort. What I've learned is like it, there's effort, like a, a lot of effort. I mean, it, it's not it's not easy, B but it's simple. I mean, you just follow the blueprint. And I think sometimes we or or just people in general say like, hey, I'll, I'll get a coach or get a mentor, and he will just do it for me, and uh, you know, share the secrets and cookie cutter, and I'm done. I mean, it. it it takes a bunch of effort, uh, effort, you know, it's not easy. 
and uh, and the whole reason I wanted to uh, schedule is to give give back to you and to in your community because not not all courses are truly helpful. You know, I've taken a bunch of courses from podcasting. I mean, I'm, everything trying to learn it. Uh, doing courses on Udemy. I've done a few courses on Udemy, but none of them really materialized into like okay. Now I'm making money. And, and this one, I could say it's one of those like, okay, I'm making money. So that's why I'm happy to share back to you and your community. just want to tell you thank you. So just briefly on, on the background. So I'm, a, I'm an engineer. I'm a mechanical engineer. And I was born and raised in Mexico. And when I turned 19, I moved to the U.S. And I was first just working uh, McDonald's and Walmart. And that's why you guys can tell the accent. You know, I, le- I actually learned English when I was 19 years of age. Really? Uh, from zero. Yeah, yeah. So I was 19 and, and just McDonald's and I remember, you know, a bunch of funny stories learning, understanding what the combo means and no pickles and like, what, what do you mean? Anyways, that was a bunch <laughs> of stories. It was funny. But then uh, I went to college, um, started mechanical engineering and as an international student because so I was then, you know, UC Dixing or any of that. Uh, started college actually three months later after I started, my dad passed away. So everyone in Mexico, they, you got to go back to Mexico because you will not make it. And I said, I'm going to give it a try. You know, if I fail, at least I give it all. And I went all the way to a bachelor's and master's degree in mechanical. Uh, but I always wanted to have my own business. But, but since, since I was in the U.S. as an international student, or uh, I, I couldn't just leave off my parents. I mean, my mom was in Mexico. Right? So it's was like, I need a job so I can make, I had to build my own process. It wasn't like, okay, I'm going to build my parents' garage and I build a business and I don't pay rent. And, you know, I had to figure out a way to make money. And one of them was like, okay, I'm going to just get a job. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to be in here. I'm going to save money and graduate it. Um, work for Copa America a little bit and I started doing like real estate flipping houses and in 2015 I got laid off from oil and gas and bought a restaurant and I've had it for eight years and I didn't buy a business I bought a, I bought myself a job so for those out there thinking on restaurants I mean they said friends don't let friends buy restaurants so it's <laughs> it's just way way too much work and very little profit especially with the internet if it was like 1980 or 1960, like, okay, yeah, yeah, let's figure out how to make it work and, and you can make it work. And it's not about not making money, but it's about the return on investment of your time and effort. So there is better options out there. I mean, yeah, you can make money as a gardener, you know, you can make money as a painter. It, it matters, right? It's not, but it's how do you can make money with the least amount of effort? How can you be smart with your time? I was in this restaurant thing and I was in real estate and, and all of them were too much work. And by now I have four kids. I got a six, a four-year-old and twins, 10 months. And I said, well, I want to be with the kids. And I don't want to just work, 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 work and be with them when they're like 16 years of age. So what, 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 what can I do? And I think I started Googling, um, Online companies, online businesses. Wow, oh, oh, I, I, I gotta remember. I I don't remember exactly. I think I came across your podcast. Maybe your podcast thing or newsletter. I think it was your. I was just listening to a bunch of podcasts and and uh, reached out to a guy from FE International in Vegas. He bought a site. Actually, he's part of your community now. And, and what I remember, and I, th- I think I gave you the feedback. I was not a member of your community, and you were answering my questions. So you were said I was part of your newsletter. And you were sending these newsletters and, and uh, I will reply like, Hey man, but what do you mean with this? Or asking you just questions and like, Oh, he's not going to reply. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a pay member. So he's not going to take the time to respond. Uh, and you were responding to my emails. And I, I think I even told you, yeah, man, I appreciate you uh, taking the time for responding to the emails. And so I felt like, okay, I'm going to join and I joined your, your, your courses and everything. So that's, I, I think, so the short answer, like I got into online businesses because of all the mistakes or all the learnings that I got from the physical world, the brick and mortar, yeah. uh, the fact that they take so much work, so much effort and, and the margins, my, my restaurant, a restaurant makes 10 to 15% average. And it's crazy hours. Whereas an online business, I mean, depending if it's content or e-commerce, it could be in the 90%, 95%, you know, mm. working from home anytime. So it's like a, a no-brainer. So it was it was due to a bunch of mistakes that honestly, I don't think I would have appreciated so much or this much if I would have not done all these other things. You know, if this would have been my first business, mm. 
we'll be like, oh, it's cool. But honestly, like, it's the appreciation is not the same after going through all these mistakes and hurdles. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, that's how I, I jump into it. Yeah, thanks so much. There's so much to unpack in what you've just said. The fact that you joined, you, I remember you emailed me and said, I'm only going to join because you replied to my emails and they were helpful. <laughs> and then you joined. Yeah. Uh, you trusted the process. You worked super hard. And I remember when you started sending us businesses, you're like, is this actually fake? Like, I can't believe that this content business makes this profit margin. Like, is this actually real? Am I going to get scammed here? Like, I just don't, I can't, it was hard for you to believe. Uh, I remember because, because of your background in the restaurant business. Uh, I think it's super funny that you've mentioned that uh, friends don't let friends buy restaurants. I know a bunch of people that their goal is to one day start a cafe or run a bar <laughs> and I'm like, you could buy one and it sucks. Imagine trying to have to start one and how hard that would be and the failure rate of it. Uh, it's, you know, hospitality is a, a rough game. And even now, some of the stories that you're telling me that, you know, happens, you know, as you're exiting that business, like it's it sounds like a, a rough business model. It sounds like your goal is to get out of not just restaurant business, but working hard and being able to spend more time with your kids, right? How old are your kids? So six, four and, and twins. Uh, 10 months old so it's uh and we're doing homeschooling too as well so my kids are not going to traditional school my wife and i were, were educating them so we want to give them like real life i mean we want to we would like to travel be one of those like nomad families so they can learn about trees with trees on the street i mean go to parks go to other countries mm. and and understand that i don't know wi-fi and sick i mean all and malls and chick-fil-a is not you know, the world is like, there's a bunch of things out there different. So get them to learn about real life experiences and also having a, a quality of life and you know, not just uh, um, like designing, living, I think there's a phrase, living a life by design. Yeah. Life so design life. your own life by design, right? And, and, and travel and be able to, to, I mean, if I want to work out in mid afternoon, I mean, right now I wake up around 4.30, 5 in the morning and I, I, I like my routine, uh, but I'm like, hey, what if I want to get another workout midday? You know, why not? So you just get a workout, mm. um, take the kids. So have more, more quality time. And again, I don't mind working hard. I just want to make sure it's a smart. I want to make sure it's, I'm not inefficient. That's a word. You know, I want to optimize my effort. And I always tell people, it's like running, okay? You can go run uh, with boots and a suit and a jacket. And I mean, you're running. Of course, you're, you're exercising. But you're so inefficient because you, you're running with boots and not tennis shoes. You know, uh, not the right shorts, the right pants. It's, it's You got to put like 150% effort just to get maybe 70, 80% back. And you might get injured because you have no, no right tools. So it's like, okay, if I'm going to do five hours of effort on my business, I want them to be five hours of like almost no inefficiencies. Whereas in the physical world, let's say I'm going back to a restaurant or real estate. Okay, I might go, okay, I got a plan for the restaurant. Today, we're going to do X, Y, Z. And then I got a call saying, hey, uh, like I was telling you just before we started, we got the power. They, they cut the power. So some thieves try to steal the copper wire and they left us five days without power. So now your whole plan goes to the drain because now you got to figure out to get an electrician. Now you got to put so much effort and all that effort is not moving you forward. You're in the exact same spot that you were yesterday because now you're trying to fix all these things. Or an employee doesn't show uh, Last week, an employee just showed up, didn't just quit. And she just didn't even call nothing. She just decided to quit. Didn't show up, didn't call, didn't answer my phone, didn't take nothing. She just didn't show up, you know? Yeah. So that's the thing. You cannot really, you got to work super hard just to get just to maintain something back. the business, maintain that rush. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's just I want to work hard, but I want to sure. maintain it. It's there's no growth exactly. on top of it. Yeah. Exactly. So I want to work hard. I don't mind it if he's one day or one day off. But that day I want to be like, okay, I, I invested. I spent five hours on my site, on my business. Mm. But there were like five solid hours. Like I know I did some articles and I clean it. And it was like just almost no lo losses. So that's... that that's growth like activities, our... not maintenance activities on the site. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and that's the difference when you buy the right business model for your lifestyle goals, right? And your financial goals uh, because it would be it sometimes it can be different if you're buying an e-commerce business or you're buying a job not all e-commerce businesses are jobs but there can be more work involved to just keep the business running versus content sites most work is uh, growth activities typically 
<laughs> so how no, exactly. You- and, and, and I, I said I don't want to. Do, if I can, if I if I can touch it, I don't care. Like I don't want it. So that's that's my view on e-commerce. I'm not saying this. I'm, it's not profitable. I'm, I, but if if it, if it, if it's something I can touch it and feel it. Okay, I'm not interested. So that's why I don't like e-commerce. It's like, hey, I, I don't want physical products. I, I don't want any of that. Was that your goal when you came into buying an online business? Did you have a business model that you wanted to choose or how did you come to the arrival of a content site? I remember us talking through email threads, but yeah, how did you come to that position? I, I started and maybe down the road, I, I, I'm interested on SaaS, software as a service, but I, I don't, I know you, I don't have the background. I'm in the software and I know you can hire these technical guys and they can take care of it. So if I ha- if I have a, a technical guy that manages my my software my software uh, business, and this guy or girl quits or you know dies or disappears or something, wh- who's gonna do it? You know how how do I start from scratch? Uh, in my I'm sorry if I use my restaurant as a reference a lot, but in my restaurant, I mean I can literally do almost ninety five to one hundred percent of what everyone does. I'm I'm probably the slowest one. I'll be the, I'm, I have a bakery. So I'll be the slowest baker ever. You know, the sandwiches, I can make, we make sandwiches and pizzas and salads and all stuff. I'll be the slowest one, but I, I can still do it. You know, I can do everything they do. I, can, I know how to do it. Uh, I, I almost never get into it unless they don't show up or we're busy or something happens, but at least I can do it. So I have the same feeling on, on the software. You know, I don't, I don't intend to be that technically savvy, mm-hmm. but the fact that I don't understand it for me to at least explain it to someone else that I hire uh, makes me doubt it. You know, I'm like, I'm, I don't, I'm not too confident with it. So I put the SaaS, I didn't eliminate it altogether. I just put it on the parking lot. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do these other things first, you know, the content and, and uh, e-commerce was just out of the line, like right off the bat because of the physical products and the lower margins and dealing with distributors and products and Amazon. And I, I just, it was just a, a big no. So SaaS is in the parking lot right now, and I'm gonna I'm and, and we'll move to content, and that's why I said okay I can I have a guy who writes the articles and stuff, but I mean like if he doesn't show up or disappears I can I understand it maybe I won't write it or or I will if I need to, but I can explain it to someone else. This is what I expect from you. This is how I want it. So it's easier, you know. So that's why I went from from that to content. I love it. I love it. So when you first joined. You started just devouring the content. I remember you went through it all very, very fast and then you started doing due diligences. What do you think was one of the hardest parts of the whole journey from starting, to, I'm going to buy, I'm going to work with Jared and, and the Bob community in the course to buy a business to you owning this business that you own now. What do you think was the hardest, hardest part or a couple of challenges that you faced that would be important just, for others to know about? Get, get in the discipline and to do the due diligence, mm. um, be, being I think the, uh, being a white belt in a totally new industry, a new new business. Uh, there's I think certain terminology like I said, like sometimes we become black belts in a field, uh, and we don't really want to become a white belt in something new. It's like oh, I'm so good at being an architect or being a doctor, and like oh man, starting from scratch about content sites or something else like sometimes it's it's difficult you know like Mm. why do i have to go through all this struggle so during the due diligence at first i mean they will take me like i don't know i think one like four days and i honestly i had no idea what i was doing i was super discouraged i was um i was like what am i doing like I, i i didn't understand it like i was following your templates and i was okay i checked the box it says you know uh traffic but i was still like I don't understand what the heck I'm doing. I'm like, I'm just going to send it to Jared and he'll tell me if it's good or bad. But I don't really, I, I, I was so frustrated because I didn't understand the language. I didn't, it was totally new language, uh, the terminology and, and take forever. And so it, it was very difficult, man. It was difficult because I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And like, I don't, I, I couldn't even tell what's a good thing versus a bad thing. And, and my brain kept going to the physical world. Like in, in a restaurant industry, I can tell you just by the sales, like I can tell you if you're, if your food cost is too high, if your payroll is too low, if your rent is high, just by looking at the numbers, I can have a good benchmark whether you have alcohol or not. I can tell. But in these things, it's like, man, it's, it's just moving so slowly. And it, it, like, it felt like I was going nowhere. I mean, it was so, was like, I didn't want to do it. I was dragging myself to do it. Like, okay, I just, I'll just do it. Just do the work. Like, it doesn't matter the results. doesn't matter 
how it looks. Just follow the template and do it and set that here and do it again and do it here. And, and you'll be like, oh, this is not good because X, Y, Z. I'm like, what do you mean? I mean, I don't know what you mean, but okay. <laughs> like he's, he's, he's the expert. I'll, I'll just shut up and listen and move on and do the other one. And, and I was so uh, eager to get one like like I guess many of us, like we want it now. I, yes. can, I don't want it tomorrow. I want it now. I want the money today. So it was just a patience, man. Let's just do it over and over and over again. Yeah, and I have to say you did really well because what I tend to do is I tend to slow people down so they can speed up. And a lot of people, and I don't know how you were feeling. I knew that you took took the advice like, yes, this is what I need. But also in the back of your mind, it's like frustrating. Like, oh, this Jared guy is slowing me down. But it's it's actually what you need to be able to get results. For example, if you had a rushed off and you bought one of the sites, then it was so many sites you looked at were not great. You could have rushed into buying another thing like a restaurant that would have been a handful or, or a nightmare for you. So it is frustrating because it's kind of like what you said in the white belt attitude is like you need to go through the disciplines you need to learn and go through each of those different stages like we have different stages that people get to when they achieve different levels of due diligence and things that they we have like different like awards and stuff like that you've seen within the community it's frustrating to get to those to to get to those milestones right but if you try and just go from white belt to black belt you're going to get your ass kicked as soon as you get into a fight by a black belt because you haven't done the training, you haven't got the initiation. It's the same when you buy a business, you're gonna just let it crumble <laughs> if you rush. No, and, and I'll be honest, man, I made, I made the, the mistake with my restaurant. I didn't get a mentor. I was uh, 32 years of age. I was being laid off from a company. I wanted a restaurant uh, because in my mind, I, I was doing cocaine with real estate. Like, no, I need a, I, to be, I wanna be a business owner with employees. And I don't know, that's crazy in my mind, but like with employees and the whole nine yards. Mm. Uh, I overpaid significantly. Uh, I didn't even use a broker. He was like a, he's a like older uh, Asian owner. He had it for a long time, mm-hmm. um, and he asked, "I want X. I think it was like three thirty thousand. Um, I said, "Yeah." I didn't even negotiate. That thing honestly was worth probably less than two hundred. Uh, right now, I'm under contract for my. I'm selling it for like one forty five. Like I'm losing over 200,000 on that business, wow. even though I've owned it for like eight years. Um, and it's not because it's doing bad or, I mean, we're renovated, sales are higher, we put like Uber Eats and everything, but it's just the, the demand, you know, there's low demand, there's so many restaurants out there for sale. I mean, restaurants, they're penny profit businesses. So mm. it's, some of them do sell on the millions and everything, but it's like this one's, I mean, they rarely, the, 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 the failure rate is super high. My point is like that moment I didn't use a mentor, I rush into it. I didn't get an evaluation. And my wife was like, hey, you see, we made a mistake. And this one, I, I was reminding myself of that mistake a while back. It's like, slow down. You know, you messed up once. You don't want to mess up twice. If you do twice, man, you're a dumbass. Like, just, just go back and get a job again. Like, like if you don't learn from your mistake a while back, man, you shouldn't even be here. So I was like, hey, now I'll try to the better way. You know, like, got a mentor, uh, got part of a membership and did the work and the diligence and had to let, I mean, I think two that looked decent got eventually under contract and like, that's okay, keep moving, keep doing it. So yeah, so since I made that mistake once, it's okay, I just, just, I don't want to do it again. So yeah, that's why I listened. Great work, great work. So a lot of people talk about how long, and I will ask you, how long did it take you to buy the business from starting the course to buying the business or joining the community to buy the business. But the time frame means nothing, absolutely nothing. And I want people to hear this because a lot of people try and join the community and they give themselves a strict time frame that I need to buy a business by X dates or within this certain time frame. And then they don't do it and they feel like they've failed. Whereas we shouldn't be measuring the time frame. It's the inputs that we put in, right? Now, I know that mm-hmm. you have a family you have a very busy life with training and you also have your restaurant and you know flipping houses. You do a lot, but you also get a lot done. You put a lot of inputs in. So how many, how many due diligences or how many businesses do you think you looked at before you bought the, bought the right one? And then, how, and then what was the time frame from you joining to being closing them on, on this deal that you bought, just bought? So I did it roughly on the 30, I think 30, I mean, high 20s. Mm due diligences. So considering the first one were taking me, I don't know, two to four days. So you can do the math. Uh, and, and the whole time, I think, took me roughly six months 
think it was six months, mm. roughly. Like you said, I mean, you're right. I mean, everything, everyone's different. What I think kind of helped me a little bit is, is the background that I had in, in uh, as a, just a business owner. So you can uh, you can translate a little bit some of the info. Like for example, when I and I we, we, when I, you know we talk about this, like the brokers will write off uh, some expenses, right? So it's like, okay, this side uh, I don't know makes two hundred thousand dollars a year, mm. and um, the expenses were twenty thousand, but they add back ten thousand on content creation because just because they feel like it. And I, I would talk to you and I would talk to, talk to them like, dude, wh- why are you adding back that number <laughs> as, as if it wasn't an expense? I mean, content creation is an expense. And what was I mean, it, why, why? this pesky, this, this, you're right, it is an expense. It's necessary to keep the business maintained, not just growth. The more you put, the more content you put in, the more it's going to grow. But if you don't put any content in, the sites, you know, or ch- update some content, it's going to go backwards because Google and SEO mm-hmm. is an evolving thing. So it's absolutely necessary, absolutely. And I think any SEO and a, a lot of people in the content game will agree with this. Uh, so we have this pesky fight of the ad backs. Some ad backs are damn set legitimate, of course. But what, yeah. was, mm-hmm. what was my answer to you with these content expenses? What did I, do you remember what I said to you around how to handle these? Uh, I don't remember exactly, but I, I think it was around the word, the, the lines of, I didn't, it, I didn't it myself, I think, is that what you said? I yeah. Think, I, I, honestly, I don't remember. And like, it, it, it was, going back to a point, it was uh, uh, the brokers trying to look the business more profitable. And, and maybe someone without, a, without experience looks okay. But since I have my restaurant, like, hey, my, my, I cannot sell you my restaurant. I tell you, by the way, I want to add back 100000 in food costs just because I'm like, dude, you can, the food cost is part of business. <laughs> it's, a, it's cost of doing business. You cannot yeah. tell me. You don't need the food next year, so you so your business looks more profitable. So that that was things. But no, could you expand? I remember what uh, maybe, maybe I forgot. Yeah. So typically, I reserve some of this for for members, for paying members. Like I reserve some some valuable stuff for paying members. But because this is an important discussion for all of us in the space, if we the more of us that accept these ad backs then it's going to become normal. So we've got a lot of people, unfortunately, mm. that will buy a business based on a higher multiple, right? Or based on ad backs being included and they're uneducated. So they will buy it. And that's not the where the market's at. They're increasing the value of these businesses and the multiples because they're uneducated, which means us that are educated find it a bit harder to get into the market and buy a deal at a valuable price, at a good price, because we've got these uneducated buyers just throwing money at it. Now, the reason I like to share this is because we can fight the ad backs and the multiples and all that sort of stuff together. I'm on both sides. Like I buy and sell businesses, but I don't, you know, I'm not just like here is all the content that I spent and not include that as an expense. Like I'm, I'm a realist. I like to be fair here. You can negotiate your ad back. You can negotiate your multiple. And that's what I said to you. And that's what I say to a lot of people is you can say, hang on a second, this is a necessary expense you know it, I know it, let's meet in the middle here or let's have some common ground at least so I'm not paying all of these ad backs, which I don't think is fair and let's sort of meet in the middle. The more people that buy businesses based on just here's the, how the ad backs are, uh, this is what they're listed at and this is the listed price of the business. The more uneducated buyers that do that makes it harder for the educated buyers to get a great deal. So I find it's really valuable for people to get educated for the market and for themselves. And that's what I like to mention to people with the ad backs is like, it's everything is a negotiation in business. Everything is a negotiation. No, d- definitely. And, and another thing I, I um, want to share is like when, when looking to the sites or at least me, I, I don't think you never, or maybe I'll speak for myself. I never got a hundred percent confident, like in case people think, oh, so I'm gonna wait until I like, I like hundred percent positive is like the safest investment ever. I mean, no, at least not for me. I don't think anyone will buy or make an investment until they're like 100% confident. Mm. I mean, I think you can, my opinion, you can reduce the risks, but you can never eliminate it. Like even having a job is a risk because you can get fired, you know? Just just deciding to walk out of your house every day is a risk. I mean, you can get hit by, by a boss. So I never got 100% confident. Like I was still hesitant and nervous and honestly as of today 
I still find it difficult to believe I own a business that I cannot see or touch. You know, I can see the website, but I cannot. But like, I find it difficult to, to migrate my mind from the tangible business world mm -hmm. to the intangible. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, even when I bought it and everything, like, yeah, I, I was probably, I don't know, 80, 85% confident. But it was just one of those things like, hey, I think this is it, you know, and I'll check a bunch of boxes, make you feel good, uh, ask you and got a, a opinions of, in different places and everything so that's that's when i uh jumped in and i think i i call it like the the muscle of a risk mm. and i think you work that muscle through doing things over and it's like experience someone that has never experienced like uh, for example i, I talked to friends that want to do real estate and they're they have their jobs and they really have very safe lifestyle and they want to go from that to flipping houses i'm like dude I mean, I, you can do it. Anyone can do it, but your your mind is not there yet. So why why don't you just let's say just buy a house that is moving ready and you can rent it tomorrow. Forget about renovations, but at least you start working out the the muscle of risk, so that you can take higher risk little by little. And in my case, I mean, since I left my corporate uh, job like seven eight years ago, the restaurant and I was I mean I lost mo so much money elsewhere, and I was just I think I had my muscle of risk like. Okay, this is a risk. Looks good. Check most of the boxes, if not all, like 95, 90% of the boxes. You said it look okay. I mean, you you were, you. I think you, you always were pretty neutral, which I liked it because you, you were not showing like too much emotion, positive or negative. Like if it's yeah. bad, it's like, yeah. I mean, man, look look at the numbers. This is like, not like, holy damn, this thing is bad, man. Don't do it. <laughs> You're like, all un I'm emotionally, so emotional. like, oh, this yeah. Yeah, or, or if it's good, like, hold oh, your dude, buy it right now. Don't, don't let it go. Just go ahead and buy it. Like, hey, you know, look good. Yeah. So I had to make my own decisions. And, and, um, and like I said, I was still hesitant and nervous and not 100%, but like, I, I still went ahead and did it. And I think uh, um, so far, so good. We'll see. Yeah, it's great. I, um, I, don't, I typically don't get emotional about, about businesses because we just see, we see so many. There was one case where, uh, one of the guys in the group, Marcello, presented a deal and I was like, wow, this hasn't sold yet. Why hasn't it sold? I got excited about it and I didn't mean to and then that got him excited about it. But then he just he just went back and the good thing is what he did is and he's bought property before, invested in multiple things and he'll buy multiple businesses. He just said, all right, cool. I won't go in at a high price. I'll stay at my solid price even though we both think it's really good. And the broker mm. tried to get him up to bid against himself <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and i said to him look you can do that but you, like a lot of the brokers will say hey we've got this other offer you know to get the deal you're gonna need to pay x amount and people that are brand new to this will be like oh shit okay i've got to i've got to go away and and bid that amount and i what i like to tell people is like how do you know if that's true exactly. and stick with your valuation so anyway, he got he got it for the right price and it was a good business. But it's really important to stay non-emotional. And if you do get emotional about it, like I did at the time, even though it wasn't the business that I was looking to buy, is to come back to go, hang on, like let's use our logic mind here because this is how we should invest. Talking about flipping houses and your friends that want to get into it and you've been flipping houses for a while now, I want to ask you, what's what are you going to do more of? Are you going to continue to flip houses or are you thinking about flipping businesses? And what's the comparison? What do you not like about flipping houses that you can get from flipping businesses or online businesses? On, on the flipping houses, the human factor, in my experience, on almost any business is the hardest thing to control whether you sell sandwiches in a restaurant or sell houses because humans were so unpredictable mm. you know and and even when i was dealing with contractor i mean materials they might go up in price because of inflation it's very very difficult have people that have the exact same work ethic and goals that you want so for now my next approach uh, i mean i mean I, I jump from ideas and businesses and I don't know what's going to happen five, 10 years from now, but at least for now, I, I want businesses where I depend the least, the least possible of people. So that way I make my own call, my own decisions. And if I'm a staff, it's, it's my own, my own call, but I don't want to depend on people. So that leads me more focusing more into the online world, uh, on real estate. I'm also a real estate agent. So I might still just do, uh, real estate deals every now and then as a realtor, but probably not as an investor. No, not as an investor. Maybe, maybe like super down the road. And, and if, if I get financially stable and I got some money, I might be like a passive investor. 
you just maybe lending money for people who are actually doing I, i've lent money before as a, it's called hard money lender so you become a private lender so people that are actually flipping houses they need the financing so you can lend money at it could be 11 or 13 percent for like six months or 12 months but that's technically passive and you get the note if he doesn't if he defaults in the house i mean you can foreclose on it and keep it you know yeah so yeah so i'll probably stay more into the online world i would like to, i'm also working on a, a little uh, startup so um for like taxes and sales taxes and stuff but again it's mostly software and i want i want to try now to stay within the online world so maybe buy more content sites uh work on this startup um and on the real estate side maybe just keep my 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 license active mm -hmm. just for maybe friends or family or you know, if i want to see houses and you know, when I need it, I'll I'll just use it. Great, love but it. Yeah, no more, no more flip, no more flipping. No more flipping houses for a while. For a while, no. <laughs> Do you feel owning an online more. business is easier than flipping houses? Hands hands down. You know what? The only challenge I find, and I think this is my personality. I'm very hyperactive, so I can be outside. I mean, I think I told you I've done like two Ironman triathlons, yeah. and there's like a like was 240 kilometers, 140 miles. And, and training and i can get up but if you put me sit down and, and meetings and 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 work i mean i find it challenging i fall asleep and like i can i can go to true coffee i just gotta build the muscle now of sitting down so on, on the computer when i'm working on it like i'm working on my content and i love it and i i, I mean I'm, I'm passionate and i'm grateful and i like it the only challenge is just getting myself used to okay now you gotta learn for example i'm, I'm learning to take breaks in the computer you know like hey, no more like like what's like 25 minutes and get out otherwise i fall asleep and and just I, like i have like I, like i feel like i have ants you know like i want to move on around i want to do something like no mm. sit down mm. at least one two three hours but your answer is like yeah man i i find it way, way better i enjoy it way better i i can work on it whenever i want to i can get my cup of coffee uh i can just like i truly enjoy it and again i think i think it's because I, i've done so much of the other things that makes me appreciate it so much. And I, 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 I don't think I would have appreciated it as much if this would have been my first business eight years ago. Like, I'll be honest. So I think sometimes we need to go to, to the hard stuff. Like you said, I think you, you, you're plumbing, right? I think that's your background. You were yeah, doing... Yeah. Um, so like going from being a plumber to, to working on your computer for you to also, I'm assuming it's like night and day. Now you're like on your, on your computer, you can travel, you can surf, but I, I, I don't, I don't know if you're the same boat. Like, I don't know if you would have appreciated the same if, if that would have been your own business. What do you think your first business? If you understand to appreciate, then the older you get, the more you can appreciate. And yeah, I mean, I still, to this day, my like quitting my nine to five job as a plumber is like, one of the one of my greatest achievements i believe because it was the hardest one that i've had to overcome now with more money and time and resources in business i can make these moves and do things it's less hard and less stressful uh so i still appreciate that back then but now it's just really ensuring i keep that muscle built of like appreciating that i where i'm at uh so yeah i want to i want to hear um, well a lot of people will want to hear <clears throat> I already know, but are you able to share some details about the business that you bought? So you bought a content site. Feel free to share anything you do want or anything you don't want reserve for yourself. Uh, how much do you buy the business for rough figures or how much is making? And then what did you, maybe the multiple and what were some of the components that you liked about the business on why you bought it? Within the content sites, I mean, I I learned from you like there's different fields, you know. There's like the affiliate, the, the display advertising, direct advertising. The one that you recommended the most, and and I agree. I mean, I, I like that one. Is where where display advertising is more than ninety. I think you said ninety five percent or eighty eighty five percent or something. Where you have mostly display advertising, very little affiliate, very little of, of or anything else. So this one makes I think ninety percent or ninety five percent of mostly display advertising, which is good. So it's mostly mostly display advertising. That's uh, so no 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 other a little bit of affiliate, but not not so much. Uh, and I bought it. It was and people, at first the, the numbers people think oh man and I, and it's in the, some sort of like pets. So I I also learned you want to stay within pets babies. The uh, niche is pets, right? Yeah. Because, yes, because it's ever, evergreen content. So, and I'm sure your audience already knows, but yeah. I mean, if you get a site on, on technology, it's going to expire six months from now. But if you 
put a post about babies about how to teach them how to potty train them that article is good for the next forever you know yeah um so that was like the criteria you know like pets babies and i forgot what's the other one uh mostly content so this one is content and and it, it's it's honestly higher than what i expected it, it, it cost me roughly like i think 572 uh, around that number now people will say oh man you got a lot of money i don't have the money that's not me and i'll i'll say i mean i'm like <laughs> i don't i don't know if i'm a right risk taker or i'm just playing stupid I, I take I take huge risk. I mean, like I mean, huge and and some pay, some don't, and that's my personality, right? Yeah. I don't have the money. I didn't have it. I got I got so many loans. I got a loan from Bupo. I took all my savings, my retirement, and it's like that's not good. I mean, someone with four kids and a wife, like, hey, listen, that's just me. I'm not saying people do what I do. That's just me. I'm just I go all or nothing. I want, that wasn't my target. I mean, I wanted to get something way smaller, but I just, I just like that. And, and the numbers were good and everything. And I said, sometimes the universe. We should, or, we should put a caveat on this because I like, I would never tell somebody to go away and get that much finance unless they were prepared to, they understood the risks. I always tell people exactly. that you need to understand the risk. And if you're comfortable with the risk, meaning that you're open to taking on that risk, then then you can go ahead with it. You are, you have a high, like that different risk tolerance to most people. And so we should recommend that not everybody go down this route yeah. unless you're prepared <laughs> yeah, to then- yeah, what Gerardo's doing. Because you're a hungry man and I, I, I appreciate that. You've got, you will take on more risk than what I would take. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool to see if that's what you're open to. In the multiple, I think it's like 43 or something. And then like, okay, the business might make something maybe eleven or thirteen, but as, as like the big but, like like anyone listening, eleven or thirteen grand a month. Yes, yeah. but I think eighty percent, eighty of not ninety percent of that, the first year, this is gonna sound dumb and funny or whatever, is going towards payments. I got like so many loans, like I use my retirement and everything. So I told my wife, I, I'm selling my restaurant, so hopefully with some of the income from the restaurant. Mm. I can put it towards the the, uh, the the payments and the debt, and I'll probably be using this year my real estate license, so we can live off real estate uh, and not the business. So technically, this business will not really pay me almost nothing the first year because I gotta pay all the loans. Like I wanna pay the no, no, I won't be able to pay all of them, but the the biggest ones within the first year, yeah. and uh, and then it will free up a lot of cash flow. And the other thing I learned, I was like. <laughs> A big learning, I guess, dumb mistake. I didn't know that content sites, uh, media vine, they, they are net 65. So they pay you 65 days later. So your first month, they pay you two months later. And I didn't know that. So I bought it. We closed in December. Uh, so I'm okay. I'm looking at this money coming in. Like, cool. I'm going to get paid in January. X money. And then it's like, hey, when I just Google, when, when do I get paid? It's like a net 65. So I bought it. Well, right now, I don't know when the, when the podcast is going to go out, but we're in, in February, about in December, and I haven't gotten paid. So I will, I will get the first paycheck sometimes in March. So I have to take that to the one of the lenders because they didn't know either. And like, listen, dude, I would love, like, your payments start like day one in January. But listen, I have no money. Like, I'm serious. Like, I, I empty everything that I had, like, everything. My stocks, my... So I cannot pay you, man. Like, can you, you know, wait for a couple of months? And they, they waited for a response, like... Man, we cannot go without payments for two months. Like, I mean, charge me two thousand or something, whatever, so I can make you a payment. And so, so right now, I'm I'm just racking up my credit cards. Like, I got like the business credit card and the personal. They're just, I mean, they're, I'm just loading them because I have no that whatever cash I have left is just for the mortgage of the house because you can, obviously cannot pay with credit cards. So I'm waiting all these cards. I'm just putting a bunch of uh, on the credit card until I start getting the payments. So and some people are like, dude, how do you able to go to bed? Like, how do you just live with? I four kids and, and four kids sleep. and knowing that yeah. you got so much debt and, and 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 like I don't know man like I think it's my blood type or I don't know what's going on but I, I, it's probably I, your background yeah. man it's probably your your background I, I I would say just your your willing to willingness to and your drive and your hunger is insane <laughs> and crazy craziness and yeah it's like it was like when when I, when I did my my first Ironman triathlon it's like hey man how many marathons have you done. Like none. Like my first one was when I did the Ironman. <laughs> oh, were you a runner and a cyclist and a swimmer? Like no. I, I learned to use my 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 
bike like I, I i borrow a bike so i can do like a half triathlon and stuff like that so it's like mm. i don't know i just jump into stuff and figure out later but i make and a bunch of worked, mistakes I, I, I don't recommend it you, i don't recommend it either everybody listening this is not a high recommendation at all through this journey you've made a lot of mistakes like th- just through you learning through leaving mexico all the all the things that you've learned along the way you've had many mistakes just like this restaurant business but you're learning from them a lot of people take risks and it won't pay off and they won't learn from their mistakes and then they completely give up on everything they want to achieve in their life. For you, if this was to turn around and not do so well, I'm sure you'd come back kicking and screaming and wanting to make it work in another capacity, whereas most people don't. And that's a that's another massive reason that this is not a high recommendation at all because not everybody has that appetite <laughs> that you have. <laughs> yeah, like the t- title of a podcast, like listen to guy, listen what not to do on yeah. on buy, you know, like uh, what. So actually, what? Sorry, go ahead. As we wrap this one up. What would be some advice that you'll give to somebody? Because you, your journey is you went at it and you did a lot of work and you did a lot of due diligence. I think you did more than you said you actually mentioned in the podcast because um, we track all that sort of stuff. You did a lot of work and you're very hungry and you learn a lot of lessons along the way. What are some of the what's some advice that you would give to somebody that's like thinking about maybe I'll buy a business or maybe I'll join the community or whatever it is that thinking about going down the same route that you have? Have you watched the movies The Karate Kid? like the old yep. movies for Karate Kid, yeah? And how he was being taught some skills that looked like totally unrelated, mm-hmm. like painting the fans or putting the jacket on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at first it's like totally unrelated, but eventually it connected. So my approach for tips like buying businesses is one, start working on supporting goals, supporting challenges. It could be fitness, Speaking in public, like things like even though it might be unrelated to a business, like if you don't have the risk tolerance yet, uh, start taking this risk outside. You know, like hey, maybe you have a job, maybe you have a family, and you buy an online site, which is fine, right? You want to do the work and everything, but on the side, it start working the, the muscle of, of risk tolerance. Like, okay, maybe I don't like to speak in public. You know what I've done? One time I went to do a stand up comedy. I mean, I don't, I'm not even say, but I was just, I had to check the box. So I went to a club and and you got a waiting line. I was like the last one, you know, and, and I did stand up comedy and there were like five people there, you know, like wow. he's saying jokes and for like five minutes. But it's like find ways like you, you go to Walmart, like talk to a stranger, like all these little challenges on the side to start building the risk tolerance. Sign up for a 5K, 10K, uh, all these things to support it. And on the online businesses, it was like just... Just do the work. You know, there is there is no shortcuts. There is no, I mean, there, that's the way you just do the work. I would say the effort, it gets, it does get easier. You know, uh, eventually I bookmark, and then I book, bookmarking all the pages that I needed to do due diligences. You know, so I would just click, 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 click and open like 10 pages at once. And I will get, okay, step on, what is the traffic? What is uh, the domain rating? What all those things. And, and many, and I was, I told you a while back, Many due diligence that I did never got to you because I was able to dissect them myself. And as I was doing it, I was like, oh, uh, I caught this, I caught that. It's not even worth it to bother Jerry with this one. Like, th- so, some of them wouldn't even pass my own filter. So like at first, I will send you all of them that I do. Like, I, I didn't know. And then eventually, like, oh, man, I will send you one out of three or out of five mm. because I'm like, oh, I will kill it myself before you get that far. Like, oh, this is not good. This is not good. But I, w- I, and I was getting just faster and faster and faster. But it's one of those things like you just you just get there and do the work. I mean, something that and then eat the frog, you know, like what is like get the first thing in the morning. So what is the thing that you hate the most doing first thing in the morning? Like wake up earlier and oh, I don't want to do the as Well, do that before you work, before you anything. Just do that and eventually it gets easier. So it's just get there and do the work over and over again. And, and eventually it gets easier and uh, just be grateful, disciplined. That's it. I love really. it. I love it. Simple, simple, not easy. Yes, simple, not easy. It's simple to go and do just walk into a club and do some stand up comedy, but is it easy? Hell no. And I'm so glad that you mentioned this. <laughs> this is mindset. This is uh, stepping outside of your comfort zone. All growth happens outside the comfort zone. All the personal development things that I teach and you guys learn at the start that, you know, prepare for success in the course and stuff. But it's so important. We even have people that, are, in the last, uh, some of our Bob groups, our accountability networking groups, talking to one another and setting challenges for one another on 
go and lay down in a bookstore or go and do this thing, uh, you know, that is, is outside your comfort zone. So when it comes to time to, for you to do due diligence or buy a business, it's not that much of a mental strain because you've built your mindset so much. So I'm so grateful that you mentioned that, Gerardo. And thank you so much for coming on. Greatly appreciate it. No worries. Well, thank you for all the help and, uh, you know, good luck and keep, keep growing it and, you know, keep helping people. I'd appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks for your kind words. Everybody that is listening, thank you for listening and I'll see you on the next one. Hey, YouTube watcher, if you thought that video is good, you should check out this video here on the two best types of websites beginners should buy. Or check out my playlist on how I made my first 100K from buying websites and how to do due diligence. Check it out. It's an awesome playlist. You'll enjoy it.